Meredith. I'm with Attorney Lee Collins from the office. Um, we did have the fire come in inside today. It looks like, unfortunately, we will not be funding on this one until tomorrow morning. Um, if you have any questions, give me a phone call back at 704 well, we technically do not own this house, and here I am taking apart the entire bathroom down here, among other things. In North Carolina, you do not own a house until it becomes recorded at the court steps, which looks like it's not going to happen until tomorrow. Oh boy. Gonna be raining on and off today so we'll see how much we can actually do and what I can get in the back of my pickup truck we are closing and we have about three hours to get to work on this thing before five o'clock and I'm gonna be trying to stick to nine to five or eight to five working on this house so I can have a good work-life balance this time around and not get burned out and I can see my kids and stuff so uh, let's get to work see what we can do today definitely gonna need a poison soon It is super dark in this house, so a lot of that is because of all of this stuff that they have covering the windows, plus you have the deck up there, and then you have all the tree coverage, and then it's a cloudy day, but, and then these windows, I mean, check out some of these things here. There's just, there's too much reflection for you to really see. There you go, yeah, it's just like pure mud on the window, like what's going on there? So we're gonna take all this out, clean it up, brighten it up. I have my little handy light there so some of this video quality will be a little bit better. Recess lights will be done quite early so that way there's just like really nice lighting, great production value. <laughs> no matter how many times we use that door, we always forget that the spring doesn't work. They left this couch, it's actually really nice and it's one of the only things they left. I think it's gonna go well with their theme and it's like a leather too. Bouncy bounce. Okay, so we've closed on the property. We're in here now and Tessa's here playing with some beach balls. <laughs> no, but she is uh, stuck at her corporate job. Well, I'm gonna get started on some maybe minor demo today. We only have a few hours. I think I'm gonna try to keep this remodel as like a nine to five type of thing. So, yeah. I, so I can still see the kids You're maybe. Gonna try. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it, <laughs> yep. She's already trying to make like happy hour for Friday for her and her friends. And... This is where a little bit of maintenance, like replacing your water heater, can save you from a ton of damage like this. People are supposed to clean up all of their stuff. My guess, based off of what I found in the kitchen, is that there's a ton of stuff in here. Mother. show you another way to save some money on these remodels. So all of this is metal right here. Plus I have all these pots and pans and baking sheets and all of that stuff. And what I do with this, by the time you finish an entire remodel in the entire house, there is well over, at least the last property, $100 by just scrapping this, taking it to the metal recycling scrapyard, whatever you call it. And all you do is you put it in a bucket 
take the truck over there and they usually sort it out for you. So literally by saving a few pieces of metal and you're doing something good for the environment, right? Because they're gonna recycle it most likely. They're gonna melt it down and make something else out of it. I think even something like this can be scrapped and this is just all metal right here. When I had Lowe's install my luxury vinyl plank at the Twin Creeks cabin property, one of the guys from the third party company that they hired out took my five amp or whatever, five AH battery. That was a four, I know, but they took my five one, which is even more expensive. And so I ended up buying this four pack here for $150 at Lowe's. They had some sweet discount online and I got it price matched in store. And there was only one location around me that had them in stock. so. That's a huge savings. And this time for safe measure, I'm gonna just do Kelly. Good afternoon, Sean. This is Meredith. I'm with Attorney Nick Collins from this office. Fortunately, we will not be funding on this one until tomorrow morning. In North Carolina, you do not own a house until it becomes recorded at the court steps, which looks like it's not gonna happen until tomorrow. Oh boy. There's a lot of mold on the back of the manatee, so I'm gonna use some more bleach here. Just precautionary. It could have been dirt too, it was pretty dirty. Okay, so now my goal is to get the water heater out from under the stairs. It's extremely moldy down there. You can see it all right here where the water heater is leaking on the other side of this wall. So I do have a HIPAA filter air purifier here. We do have a dehumidifier. I sprayed bleach all over all of these walls in here. I have a mask. I do have a P100 mask, but I'm not going to use it yet until I start actually taking these walls down. For now, I'll just get the water heater out of there and out of the way so I can work. Of course, wearing some gloves. If I start having a cough or upset stomach tomorrow, we know why. You can see the mold over there. You can see a little bit there. And then, of course, all that. So I think what I'm going to do, figure out which one the hot is and cold. Cut the cold one because that's incoming water and then put a shutoff valve, and then I can work on the rest of this later. Although I have never in my life seen a breaker like this, so I don't know how to turn it off. I guess these are fuses, so I should probably look up how to turn off a fuse box. Look at these like little baby wrenches. Little baby wrenches in there. Huh. I'm sure I'll just pull this and lift it up, but I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Especially since it's all metal, I'm not gonna mess with that. All right, it's all cleaned up back there. So there's no power going to the water heater right now. This must be flipped off already. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm using their screwdriver and it has so much mold on it, damn it. Just in case you're wondering why I'm not doing a how-to video on replacing a water heater, it's because, well, obviously I've never done it before. It was the third panel where all the electrical wires are. I've probably watched about 10 videos and they're never located where this one was located, but found it. <laughs> all right, so this one says cold and this one says hot. So how these work is the cold water comes into the tank and the hot water leaves the tank, right? Because it's a, it's not a hot water heater. It's actually a cold water heater, right? Because it heats up the cold water and then takes it out to the rest of the house through here. That means the cold water will need to be the one with the shutoff valve on it somewhere here. That's because the cold water is the one coming from outside and coming in. So as soon as I turn the water on at the street, this one here will fill up first. So if I have a shut off out here, no water can leave through the hot because the water can't come in, right? Boom. 
but I think I want the cold water to actually go up because I have a taller water heater coming in. It's gonna be somewhere like right here. So I think I want this to come straight up, have the shutoff valve here, come up the wall, get a GFCI or remove this, move it over, run it up, and then curve it to come up on top of here. Something like that, right? We'll figure it out. I don't have a sweat elbow to go from copper to PEX or a shark bite connector. So for now, I'm just gonna cap it off and figure it out a future date. I'm just hoping water doesn't just gush out. Okay, I hear a bunch of air. That's good. So this right here is called a shark bite connector and it's a plug or a cap. All you do is push this into the pipe and you're good. Actually, I, oh, I need to deburr it first. So see this metal thing right here, that little black thing? It'll actually deburr the tip of it for me. So where that Sharpie line right there is where it should line up. That means it's all the way in. I don't even need to cap this one off because that water again is going into there. They're coming out there. So we're good. I got the water hose hooked up to the water heater and it's gonna be draining into the bathroom shower. I don't need all of these after all, right? <laughs> it's actually leaking from up here. And that's how you get all that mold. The water heater is taking forever to actually drain out. So I'm going to at least measure out where some of my recessed lights are gonna go in a couple of the living room spaces down here. I actually use a free website called, and now it just went away so I have to plug in all of my dimensions again. Well, that sucks. Well, it's not loading for me. We don't have Wi-Fi here yet, but it's called blog.recesslighting.com. I'll have a link down below regardless. I always use this in all of my recess light videos, but it helps you actually punch in, okay, I need four lights. And so it tells you, and then you put in your width and your length of your room, and it'll tell you exactly how far from each wall you'll need to put them, how far apart from each other, and so on. But I do have a laser level, and I usually don't use that in this case, or in recess lighting situations. But if I turn off all the lights and get my recessed lights in one of these rooms, I can shine the laser all the way down to the other end of the house so it'll be a straight line with my laser level. At least that's the plan. I'm not sure I'm gonna be doing the kitchen measuring today, but I'm gonna do this right now. laser level right here on the screen. I've got it pointed up behind me, up there, aligned with those two pieces of tape and my markings. So it'll help me get this room because there's no wall right here in this empty space in the dining room to measure off of. So that laser will make sure all four of these are all in a straight pattern. And now I'm gonna move it to this side of the room and do the same thing over here. And then eventually I'm gonna shoot it all the way down into the kitchen and get the kitchen lights down there. Just gotta turn off all the lights and the laser shines as far as you want, really. Okay, I am done for the day. It's been a long one, even though I've only been here half day again because of the closing issue that was going on. But I got the water heater out of there. I demoed this wall, which wasn't even the plan for today. And I've taken the trim off of the doors and above there with the asbestos uh, ceiling there. So I had to be, you know, take my precautions. Got all the trim out. And then I marked all the recessed lights as you already saw. So um, I'll see you here in a little bit for day two.
Thanks for cooking dinner. No? <laughs> the kids, she went running in the rain and kids are sick. So she's been taking care of them today. See, puppies want to get back tonight, okay? Good go. Good All right, it's a new day. You might see I'm wearing the same type of gray shirt, but look, it's a little different. Got some paint on there. Today we have a whole laundry list of items. So I put my entire schedule on a Google Doc Excel sheet and I'll zoom in on this or do a screenshot of it. But basically I have it broken up by the weeks and sometimes even the days. So the day before I'll be like, well tomorrow I need to make sure I snake out the kitchen drain and I make sure I remove some of the paneling under the stairs and so on. So today we have demo the wall paneling in the fireplace because we have Wi-Fi getting installed and that's where I want to run it and they're going to run it through the studs. So it's kind of hidden. I have demo paneling in the downstairs main room. We also have a friend coming in later this evening. And so she's gonna help with a lot of the demo, like this whole kitchen, some of this wall paneling here. So I'm gonna leave some of that stuff alone for now and go work on some of the things that I had just been brainstorming over the past month or so. Knock those out because neither my wife or the friend know exactly um, what's going on up here. Although do I even know? <laughs> As I said before, it's kind of dark in this house. I have a bunch of like weird lighting and shadows and stuff. All right, we're gonna be taking apart the fireplace wall there. And again, I have a little bit of asbestos up here and I have to take the crown off of there. Now it's not really fastened to it, so it's not gonna flake too much, but I do have soapy water and a P100 respirator and a HIPAA filter over here and it's gonna be okay. And even the asbestos guy who came into the house to give me a quote on removing all of this, which by the way, they wanna remove all of the sheetrock, not just scrape it. He said it's gonna be very expensive and something like this isn't that bad to do yourself. Those are his words, but <laughs> I wasn't worried in the first place. This is a combination of soap and water and what it does is if I do knock off or flake off a little bit of asbestos up there or the mold when I ripped off the paneling here, the soap and the water grabs onto all the particles and makes it fall flat instead of airborne. So it just helps mitigate any type of risk with that stuff along with the P100 mask I was wearing. with removing this wall here is that this carpet is super plush plus the tack strips actually butt against this and so for me to rip this out I would need to come from the ceiling down but I don't want to scrape the asbestos so I have to take now the tack strip the carpet the padding and the tack strip out before I remove this wall here Second night, uh, I guess day and a half since funding. Um, today I worked a full day because it's a weekday. And then my friend Nikki came over and we had a demolition happy hour. So we get really frustrated at our job sometimes, as most people do. And it felt really good to hit stuff <laughs> while drinking seltzers. Um, so we demoed the kitchen. We took some wood paneling down. Um, after she left, I hung around and took out carpet in the three upstairs bedrooms. And overall, demoing this house has been really nice. Um, I've decided that I only want to demo houses 
that have been built by this builder going forward because so far subfloors have been intact ripping carpet up hasn't left that much debris like there's no significant glue stuck to the floors um, we've had that a couple times all right so as suspected the floors under here are beautiful tack strips have been really easy to take up the one the hardest part today was that there was a cabinet that had one nail nailed into the cinder blocks and it was really hard to get out. Um, I think it took so long that we were doing a time-lapse video and it cut out because it was taking too long. I'm hoping Sean's impressed by the progress that we made. He's coming back tomorrow and then after that for the next week my parents will be here. We'll be taking advantage of that. That's all. See ya!